Awesome. Welcome again, everyone, to Exploring Category Templates and the Query Block uh, Loop Block. I'm really excited about this topic because with the latest release of WordPress 6.1, we have quite a few more options in terms of templates now, inclusive of the category one, which we're going to look at today. And I also wanted to just explore how we can make that template a bit more customized by also playing with a query loop block as well. Um, but before we dive into that, I'm curious to know, and feel free to answer in the chat or unmute, how many people have experience with either templates um, or the query block, uh, loop block? In my previous session today, uh, we had some folks that were excited about it, but didn't know much about it, um, are aware, haven't used it. Um, some who are quite power users. Um, Suzanne said they've tried, but not really successful. Well, I hope we can make you a bit more successful after this session. Um, Chris has not used it yet. Okay, then this will be very um, hopefully uh, informative for you. But it seems like, yeah, as a baseline um, from the folks that shared, we're, we're coming in with um, some room to understand these a little bit better, which is great. Because um, I'm going to start with a little intro into templates. I won't go too long into presentation mode because I, I like to share what it looks like on the back end with folks. But I do want to give you kind of background as to what the templates are, and then we can review what that looks like in a sandbox environment. Um, and then questions. You don't have to hold them at the end, but I'll have another slide here and there for just pausing and allowing folks to ask questions along the way. Okay, so what is a template? You really can consider a template, which you will receive with a block theme if that's installed on your site um, and also using the latest WordPress version. Um, it'll allow you to create groups of blocks that are combined to create a design for a web page. So essentially a full page layout that includes things like header, content, and footer areas. And in this animation here, I'm just showing you what a single post um, template would look like. As you can see, it's a bunch of kind of placeholder or dummy data here. There's no content that you'll be creating with templates itself, it's essentially just trying to give you a framework for how a page will be displayed. And how can they be accessed? You have a couple ways that you can access this. Um, one, when you go into your dashboard, appearance, and then the site editor, this is essentially what you're going to see. You land on this, this site page, but then there's a templates section. And then that's where you can see what templates are already available with your site. And then also you can add new templates here. And in this animation as well, I've kind of captured if I were to go in and add a new template, some of the options you have there. For our purpose today, I clicked on category because now with WordPress 6.1, you can create a template for a specific category page, which is pretty awesome. Another place where you can access templates, but I would say it's not as common to do it here, is on a page or post editor. You, when there's a section on the right hand side that allows you to choose which template you'd like to set for that page or post. And that's another spot where you can jump into just starting either a new template or editing a template. One word of caution is that a theme does not equal a template. A theme will give you your site a look and functionality and set the design for the entire site, but templates give your posts and pages their own unique designs and styles. So a theme, uh, in this case, a block theme, it will just completely uh, dictate the design of your whole site, whereas a template is more singular in that it's for specific pages or posts um, that you have 
dictated for this design itself. So when you're creating these, it shouldn't affect the whole of your site. It will affect the one type of page or post that you're hoping to create this design template for. So a little refresher here. A template is not for posting content. Um, they'll be used for posts or pages to display the content with the post content block. And then templates can be used for single or multiple pages or posts. And also now 6.1, as you noticed, categories as well, and other taxonomies, you can create templates for those too now. Some common templates that you'll see um, that are typically included with most block themes are single posts, which is anytime you make a post, this is the design that your post is going to have, your pages, similar to the single post. You can also design what your 401 pages will look like if someone were to hit that when they're browsing your site. Um, the index is essentially the default template used when no other template is available. And then the home. The home is what you jump into as soon as you click on the site editor. Okay, so we've talked a little bit now about, and actually I'll back up. Before I jump into information on the query loop block, I'm curious if folks have any questions about templates, what they are, how we use them before I move on. Okay, if one comes up, feel free to just type. I will pause and I'll read out your question and work through it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Where do I find the editor as I'm self-hosting WordPress? Oh, that is a good question. Um, let's get through this one little bit on query loops. And then when we're in the sandbox, which is my local environment of WordPress, I can show you exactly where to ac access that, Suzanne. Okay, so very quickly before we get into that sandbox environment, what is a query loop? Essentially, the query loop is a, an advanced block that allows you to display posts based on specified parameters. Um, for folks who are technically inclined, uh, think of, you can think of it as a PHP loop without the code, just dynamically pulling whatever you're querying um, for the posts. So. Each query loop block is made up of various nested blocks, like the post title block, the post excerpt block, read more, et cetera. Um, and while you won't be able to edit the content of these nested blocks, you can customize the appearance and layout. So similar to a template, right? The query loop block isn't for creating content um, on the page itself. It's for propagating the content that you specify. So for example, in this um, animation here, I have a bunch of Italian food recipes and that's what the query loop is pulling. I have other recipes like African food that we'll see, but I want this specifically to be about my Italian food. And so any post that is marked as Italian food or European food would be pulled into this query loop. Okay, so then yes, you had a question. Um, let me share my setup with you and we can dive into your question about where to find the editor. So today I'm using local for my local environment. I find that to be pretty easy to use. And I'm also using 2023, which is the latest wordpress.org theme. It's accessibility ready as well, which is really great. And then the latest version of WordPress, which is 6.1.1. Here's some links to, to that setup. But of course, it's not only about what I like. There are many options available to folks. So I like to just share some other options in case um, you don't find that local is your style. There are many more options for you. Um, Jace, which I've included in the theme section, is also an accessibility-ready theme. When I last talked about these kinds of themes, there were only four. And I've seen since I last checked now, um, there's about six. 
So it looks like folks are, are picking up on making sure that block themes are more accessible going forward, which I really appreciate. Okay. So let's let's jump into my site. This is the the fun exploratory part here. <laughs> so I thought a good way to talk about, and actually I have two versions here, categories is with a recipe blog. So I just very quickly created this recipe blog, which I find to be looking pretty professional, if I do say so myself already. And um, I will say it did not take long to, to create this with the vanilla WordPress. I'm not using any other plugins. I'm using out of the box WordPress and 2023 block theme to create this look. But because we're talking about categories here, I've created some recipes in three categories, Asian food, African food, and European food. On this main site too, this main page, I wanted to share that this display here is also a query loop block pulling these posts. And I didn't do this design myself. I actually pulled this from the WordPress pattern directory. Um, someone had already made this beautiful display for recipe or for posts. And I thought, you know, why not just pull and use the magic that someone else has put together. And that is another way you can go with this. So we won't be looking at this one specifically, but when you use patterns as well, you can very easily look at them in the back end and see, you know, how are they putting these together and get some inspiration from that as well. Okay. So what we will be looking at is I have manipulated my African food page. This is essentially a, you can see in the link here, an archive page for the category um, African food. So African recipes. This top part is a query block as well. And then I've just experimented here with how they could be displayed. So I chose some um, colors from that tip that are typical of African flags here did a bit of design work, and we're gonna run through how I did that uh, very soon. But going to my main page, I wanna show, if I didn't do all that work, what would it look like? And so this is a page that you would get straight out of the, the box with the theme that I've chosen. And it's not bad, right? Like I think the display looks pretty fine. You get the featured image, your title, the date, you can add more to this as well. Um, but I think most people don't want to have just category Asian here. So I went and tweaked that in the example we're going to work through today. But if you're satisfied with this, like, hey, you don't even have to put much work into it. But I want to show you how you can do a bit more work on this. So to get there, I'm going to my dashboard. Appearance. Sorry, I didn't need to click, but appearance and then editor. It's just loading. So give, let's give that a second. Well, it's loading. There's another way you could access this. So on the front of my site, I'm logged in. I could have also just clicked on edit site at the top here. And that'll take me to the same page that this one is, is loading me to right now. Come on, you stubborn page. Oh, you know what? I have the Wi-Fi turned on. That might, let's get to Ethernet. Okay. So it shouldn't be broken pages. So let me refresh here real quick. Oh, actually, this doesn't matter. So this is the site editor where you'll land on, even if you're on the category page that you want to access, it's going to take you to the site editor first. And you'll see up here that home is the first page that it'll show you here to be um, changed. But I'm going to click on, if you have a logo set, it's 
it'll be the logo. If you do not have a logo set here in the top left, it'll be the WordPress logo. So you'll just click there to toggle this navigation menu and click on templates. And so this is the um, site that already has the African category template created. I also wanna show you if you have made any changes to other templates, you'll see this little blue mark here and that says this template has been customized. So that is essentially in the home, two things that I've already manipulated straight out of the theme. So when you have a new template that you add, it won't say 2023 theme. That's because I'm creating it on top of the 2022 theme. But if it says 2023 here, it's because it's part of the theme and then it's showing that I've customized it further. So I'm gonna go into this site actually, because this does not have the category page yet. And we're going to go to templates. You'll see here, I do not have any templates here yet that are for category pages. Add new and category. So for this one, I want to do a specific item. And that specific category that I want to use is my African food recipes. Okay, so now it's already generated this, this template page for me. And all I have to do is, is change it to look the way that I want it to look. And from the beginning here, we had not something that said archive type name. We had a banner. So I'm kind of curious there, sorry. on the editor apparently it changes to the customizer if you have another theme installed yeah I'm curious what what theme you had installed Suzanne so if you have a classic theme thank you that this is great to point out if you have a classic theme installed you will not have the site editor um, available to you block themes are the types of themes that will give you that access so 2023 is a block theme for example um, and if you're in the, the repository for themes and you use the full site editing tag to sift through, these would all be uh, themes that also enable that site editor functionality for you. So I'm sorry I couldn't clarify that for you, but it's a good point to, to share with everyone. I do want to note as well that with this latest update, um, you are able to enable template parts with classic themes as well. So if that's something you're interested in, it is something you have to do coding wise. Um, that is still available to you if you do not want to change to a block theme. Although I highly recommend uh, the block themes. They're, they're getting really, really great. So for my page here, we want, it to, we want to start getting it to look like what I had on my original site. So let me get here. So we're trying to get it to look like, like this. So first of all here, this doesn't have much to do with the query loops, but I want to show you how I got that put together. Um, I like doing, clicking the three vertical dots and then an add before, insert before. This just puts a block readily available above the content that I've selected. And for me as well, accessing the block repository is easiest for by doing a backslash and then searching for what you want. So in this case, I want to cover, but you can see there's a lot of recommended things that come up, but you're not limited to that. So you'll just want to type in the type of block you're looking for. In this one instance, I'm looking for a cover. I had a black background and I'd also like this cover to be full width. So across the whole page. Right now, the default is to have a paragraph, but I'm going to put a heading here. And let's make it H1, so African food. 
but that's not all I did here. When you have these blocks open on the right-hand side, you also have a lot of customization that you can do. So some things that I did here was change the font family for one. I believe it was this source Serif Pro. Yep. I also centered this and you can also adjust the size here. And I think in this case, XXL is perfectly fine. So now we have this banner on the top of the page, whereas before, actually, let's grab this one. We were looking at this, right? So as we're making these changes, I can do a little refresh. So let's do a save real quick and see how that's adjusted this page. There you go. Now we have that banner at the top of the page. All I need to do is get rid of this category here. And I can do that by removing this archive title. Oop. Great. So we're partly done here. We haven't touched the query loop yet. So let's look, in, let's look at what that is doing right now. One thing to note is with this default one, this setting inherit query from template is typically on by default. And so what it's doing right now is it's inheriting the query, which is African food, things that are categorized as African food and pulling up those posts. If I didn't have that toggled on, it would just start displaying all the posts up to the certain amount of that I have set without really changing it based on the category page. So you are totally welcome to, if you're like, hey, I just wanted to do this and that's all I need, that is totally fine. But that does kind of limit some of the capabilities you have for display settings, for example. So when this is toggled on, you see there's no display settings button. And then it comes on this little filter after that. And you get a couple options here, how many items per page, the offset, when to start the, the queue of, of posts, and then how many to show on the page. And from here though, we still want it to be um, cognizant of our, our African food category. So I'm gonna scroll down on the right-hand side and click the plus on filters and toggle on taxonomies. And this is where we can once again, just filter out on this specific page, what types of posts should be showing up. So with that done, now you know a bit more about that, but my first query loop on this page, it doesn't really look like what it's showing right now. So I'm gonna do an insert before here and let's look at the query loop. You have two options here. Um, you can choose a pattern for the query loop or start blank. In this one right now, I'm gonna do choose. And I find it to be easier to look through these when you actually have content on your site. Otherwise, there's gonna be a bunch of placeholder images and, and content that might not make it as easy to visually tell the differences or the styles that you, you will have. So with this, I can see, okay, my featured image is gonna be on the left. We've got the title, a little excerpt, maybe read more. And you can kind of see better the, how your posts will be displayed with if there's actual content in there. For this first one though, I just was very simple here and I chose this pattern at the top. I told it to not inherit the query from the template, but I filtered once more so that it only gives us African food. And in this style, if we look back at the, oops, the page that has all of that without completely making your window too big. Here we go. We look back at this page. This one's really long across. So to get make that happen, and it's only one that's doing that. So which template theme should we install? Good question. I'm using the 2020 three theme. 
This is the latest theme for WordPress 6.1, which was released last month. So it's going to have a lot of great customization options already available to you out of the box. And it will allow you to use the site editor and, and blocks as well. So going back to this query loop, and please, please keep asking more questions or stop me if, if I was too fast. I'm very happy to go over anything again. Um, with this first query loop, though, design-wise, I had I clicked here on this alignment and got it to full width. So it's across the whole page. And then I did tamper with this um, items per page here. So it's three right now. I only want to show one. And here you'll see I've got a doubling of those posts now, the oxtail stew. So that's where the offset comes into play here, because then I can offset this query loop by one. So it's saying skip one and go on to the next posts, which is pretty valuable if you want to kind of play with the design a bit more. And now you can see if we save and pardon me, do a little refresh. Let me rearrange this. There we go. This is looking like the example page full width across. And then we only have the two other recipes in this collection. We don't have um, the oxtail soup coming at us again. But that's not the design I fully created in the example site. So let me show you how I went about doing that. So we're going to leave this first query loop alone. And I'm going to remove our other friend here. So when inserting blocks, I find it easier to click on the one before and you can do an insert after, insert before. Otherwise, some things could get grouped together. So you want to be mindful of that potentially happening as you're, as you're going through this. OK, so we've got, we don't want a paragraph. I'm going to start with a row. And bear with me here. I am hoping to get two rows of my query loop showing the recipes, essentially. So in this first row, I'll add my query loop. And instead of choosing from a pattern like we did with the one above, I'm going to click on Start Blank, which is kind of fake news a bit, because as you can see, it's not really starting blank, blank. It's still giving a few samples to work with here, which is totally fine. So um, instead of starting completely blank, I'll start with the image, date, and title. And then I'll open this up so I can see exactly what's going on in my um, query loop here. So we've got our image, date, and title. That, those are totally things that I want to have. But what I would like to see here is the it, everything encased in a background color. So the way I did this is I'm clicking here on the post image, a uh, featured image, and I'm going to insert before a cover. I'm just going to choose this random color now, but I actually want it to be, oh, I did this last time, not the paragraph. I would like the cover to be, yeah, this nice golden yellow here. And we'll just remove this on this paragraph because we're not even going to use this paragraph. Um, and then within this paragraph, uh, sorry, this cover, I've got a row going on. So let's do, we could have just done it there, but that's okay. A row and I'm going to remove this one. And I'm going to start putting the things that I have in this row. So what am I doing? The row that I just created within my query loop is going to create this effect here of having the title and the date aligned. And we can definitely increase the rows as well to include more. But for this example, it should just have, I'm going to show you a drag and drop here, the title. I'm going to open. I can also drag and drop within the list view to be right beside. Awesome. So now, hey, that's done. Next up, we do want this post featured image to be within the same row. As you can see, it's not included in there yet. 
So I'm going to pull that in there. Sorry, not within the row, within the cover. And then I'm going to push this down. Here we go. So going up here, now we have the title, the post title and date within the row and the featured image within the cover as well. If we group that together. Also included though, we had the post excerpt and a read more. So let's create that. So excerpt, there we go. And then one more after here, we have the read more. And those were the essentially all of the items that I had within my query loop block here. Good. Okay. So a few things that you'll notice is still a little different is the curvature of the images here. There's some kind of design aspects. There's a bit more padding. The read more looks more like a button. These are all things that we can now play with in this right-hand side block design tool area. Um, one of the things that immediately come to play, come into play here is padding. So I'm selecting this whole cover here and I'm just gonna use the padding one. So immediately it's not any longer edge to edge. We've got some space in between and you can do this for any aspect you'd like. So if I wanted my row to also have some padding so that the um, letters aren't as close to the image, I can do that. It doesn't, this is a universal setting. So if you don't want to do it like that, you can click this hyperlink looking area, a button icon here and do individual sections like top right, bottom left, or if I unclick that, I can do a general smaller pixel changes like 10 or, or more, depending on what you want. Because as you can see, when you go to one, it, it has a, a pretty wide setting there. And then clicking on the image itself, um, you can get more granular with the design tools now, which is pretty great. So for example, for this, I played around with the radius. In the top right, I put 100. In the bottom left, 100. And that gives this smooth curvature on the bottom and the top. And then the other kind of design aspect we had here was this read more button. And what I did here was I added a background color and changed the text so you can read it still. But it's pretty close together. So to fix that, I added some padding as well. But Oh my gosh, if I click on one, it's quite a lot. No one needs a button that big. Um, so I did do a custom size here instead and just a couple pixels essentially to give it more of this little button like effect here. So that has already given us a, a bit more of a design here. Um, as you can see though, I have two, two rows. So two rows of um, posts popping up here. But they have essentially the same design principles that we've we've used here. Instead of trying to recreate exactly what I've done here, and I'm going to remove this pagination because that's not in there. I'm going to also remove the no results because we don't need that here either. You might be tempted to just, hey, I'm going to just try to recreate this one by one, but it's really good that if you click here, there's a duplicate functionality. So you do not have to go in and redo everything that you've done. If you've set it right once, you can duplicate. And since it duplicated within my row, now they're side by side. So looking at here, this should be showing with my filters. African food, and then this query loop, which is right next to it, we'll also want it to be showing African food. So on these. But the color, background color for this cover was red. So I'll just change that. 
to red. And there are some kind of dynamic typography things design-wise that are happening here. As you saw, when I changed the background color to red, the font automatically changed to white, um, which is pretty handy because then you don't have to go and change that as well. Um, so there's things like that that are just already packed in there to make your life a little easier. Um, I'm going to save all these changes we've made so we can see <clears throat> what that looks like. So this is what we had before, making all of those edits. I'm going to refresh this page. And now we have the two rows of posts being dynamically called. You can keep playing with the design as, as much as you want. Uh, there's no stopping you there. One thing I'm already noticing is like maybe adding more padding to the row so it's not so um, on the edge of the page. As you can see here, it's like on the edge. I just added some padding. So now it's not. OK, I see a question came in. So I'm going to stop there. And then if anyone wants me to redo something or uh, has any other questions, feel free to, to type them up. Let me see if I can get to this one real quick. Seven has the, the theme 2023 blank installed, where we get the designs, images. Yeah, so I'm happy to share some aspects of that with you. So when you install WordPress in a, in a theme, it doesn't automatically start creating pages for you. There's some placeholder content that should be there. I think it says like mind blown or something <laughs> on the home page. And I think that's something we can see within the theme library itself as well. So 20, 23. Yeah. So when you install 2023, this is essentially like the front page that you're going to get. And I think if you preview, there's not much in here, right? What I have done for this exercise is I have added posts and pages to my site. And that's why you're seeing um, these recipes being propagated or being shown when I put the query loop. I also played around with the design of my site here. And there's a couple options here that you can use if you want to have something a bit more um, in place before you, you start playing with it. And I linked above, but I'm going to relink it. The pattern library is a really great tool for this. Um, so here it is again. And let me show it here. So the pattern library, essentially you can search for what you're looking for here. <sighs> We're, we haven't gone into any of my recipes, but for example, if you want a recipe blog, there are some fine folks out there in the community who have already created some really amazing looking pages for you to just copy and paste into your site. So it would be as easy as clicking this copy pattern button, which I can show in this template um, that we're working on. And I'm just gonna add insert and it's after here. And I'm just going to paste that pattern that I just grabbed from the pattern library. So you can just, you know, use the work of these awesome designers and then make it your own. So I would replace this image with a recipe of mine, um, which I've actually done in, in these examples. So if I click in here, I did use that pattern specifically for this recipe blog site. Um, that's, I think, a very quick and easy way for you to get started. But I do encourage you to then, you know, you have all of these elements that someone has put together. Just have a look in the list view of what they did. How did they like do this to get it to look this way so that you can kind of have a better understanding too of what's going on in your site. But yeah, I hope that helps. In terms of images, um, you can add your own images via the media library. So I'm back in the back end here and there's this media area. That's where you can add new images. I've just added images of the recipes that I had. Um, but there's a bunch of free image, high quality image software or soft sites as well out there. Um, one that I've used is Unsplash. Um, there's things like, I think, Pexel as well. 
where you can browse and receive these free high quality images, stock photos. Because I know sometimes getting these high quality shots is, is pretty difficult. Okay, so I'm going to remove the, the recipe block. I just did this undo up here. Yeah, you're very welcome. So Miguel asks, is it possible to use a query loop with another, any other post type pages or custom type like portfolio or team members? Yeah, I would say so. Um, especially now, if we're going, going back here, I'm just going to open up my templates. If you are technically savvy, and I believe Miguel, you are from past uh, sessions together. Oh, I think my session closed out. So give me one second. Okay, should be good again. Let me refresh. There we go. So I've just gone back to the site editor um, and access the templates page. When we add new here, um, what the query loop, oh, and actually going back here, let me. When you're on a new template page, um, ex specifically this one that I created for um, my African food recipes, for example, I think you missed it, but when you have just the default setting on in the query loop, it'll, if you click the setting, inherit query from the template, it's gonna automatically pull the posts that are categorized as African in this um, page itself. So from there, I know when I create this page, it'll show that taxonomy. So I think in theory, yes, if you have this custom taxonomy called team members, for example, where you've added posts um, of these team members or pages of these team members, you could pull up, you could create a template for that page and then use the query loop to pull up that information. You could also use the query loop to, and use the filter to, to pull up that information. Please let me know if that's helpful. <laughs> Yeah, please try it. And I, I'd i love to see how it shows up. So if you see me again, send me a link. I'd love to see how it had, turns out for you. I did want to note something kind of critical with my setup here. Um, yay, thank you, Miguel. I'll look forward to it. As you can see, there's things repeating, right? So one thing here that I did in my other example was use the offset one. So now, oh, and that did something unexpected as well. <laughs> Wait, hold on, let me look at that real quick. Now it's got this like little sliding design that I, that was unintentional, but looks really interesting. I wonder if that'll stick. Oh, let me get to the actual page, not a recipe. Huh. Well, that was a little unintentional, but kind of interesting design wise. Um, what I had meant to do was just offset it by one. And then I could do maybe, oh, I can leave it as three, but then go into my other one, my other query loop here and do the same offset of uh, not two, maybe one. And that has them side by side, but no, no longer is the oxtail stew showing up. And so this is one of the, yeah, so Suzanne taxonomies here, for example, uh, in this filter that we were playing with, if I click on it, that's going to include categories and tags. And then if you are able to create custom taxonomies um, that would require some code adjustments, then you can add more than just categories and tags. You could 
maybe have a taxonomy that is called portfolio, for example, and that'll allow you to apply the portfolio taxonomy to posts and pages. Okay. Yeah, you're very welcome. And thank you for stopping me. I'm happy to keep answering anything that is unclear. And somehow, oh, I think I turned off my, <laughs> my category here. All right, we're back. We're back with the chicken soup. So what I was noticing here I wanted to share as well is this is all great, but we're kind of noticing a limitation here where I can't like offset it where I have my two rows and then it'll show my post number two, chicken soup. And then my post number three on the right side, jollof rice. It's showing both. And one way I was thinking you can maybe get around this is by also incorporating a tag. So for example, this is pretty general right now, right? We have African food, but maybe on the left side, I want to show, um, my Nigerian recipes, or on the right side, I want to share my Ghanaian recipes. So that is an opportunity where you can have the content of both rows then be different um, for your site. So I think in an ideal world, you can have these two rows together and the query loop would be able to identify already which posts are being shown. Um, maybe that's in the works. I don't know if that's possible yet, but in the meantime, one workaround I thought of that could, you know, allow you to do this really creative design, but make sure that you're not showing, you know, the same thing in both columns is to incorporate uh, a tag or a different category in, or a uh, different tag, sorry, in the query loop you're using. So for example, I have, if I go to my posts, back in the dashboard posts. So I have my chicken soup that's tagged as Nigerian. My jollof rice is Ghanaian and my oxtail soup is Togolese. I'm just gonna use the Ghanaian one on the right side and Nigerian on the left side. So if I go back to this post in my query loop, I'm gonna add that tag that I was talking about. So, um, Let's say Ghanaian over here. And then over here we have Nigerian. And you're like, oh my gosh, everything disappeared. That's because I still have this offset on. So we'll want to zero that out. So our posts will show up. That we were using the offset when it was calling every single post in the category of African. But now we only want it to show um, one specific post from um, my Nigerian recipes. And we don't want this to offset either because there's only one post. But now we have all of our recipes showing. And now I'm seeing this being really squished and I hope that's just because of my window size. But let's have a look here once we save. And I could press view right here in the top right. I don't know why I keep clicking out. And we'll go to recipes. And now we have the oxtail soup, jollof rice, chicken soup. So now it's not showing the same recipes. It's showing the recipes from the different countries. And if I were to add more Nigerian recipes, for example, it would show up in one row. And if I added more Ghanaian recipes, it would show up in another row. So that's kind of like my quick hack <laughs> to showing different posts, but keeping this unique style. And I'm happy to hear if anyone else comes up with something um, interesting like that as well. But ideally, it would recognize, hey, this other post is already on the page. Let's show a different post and alternate. That would be my ideal scenario. So maybe we'll have to talk to the community about that. <laughs> But that is all I had to share with you all today. Um, are there any other questions folks had? I'm happy to explore a bit more. We've got eight more minutes.
Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm glad things are sounding clear. Um, you'll have this video too to refer back to um, with anything that we we chatted through today. I did want to leave you all with a few more resources. I've already shared with you the patterns directory. I highly recommend using it if, if even to just find some inspiration because um, as I said, some people have really designed some really great things already. Can Stefan asks, can I include also some PHP code to have a loop? Ooh, that I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not that technically advanced, but that is an interesting question. I can ask someone and get back to you unless someone knows. Well, I'll note that. What type of, are you trying to imitate the query loop, Stefan? Okay. I'll ask around about that and see what I can find. Um, but maybe also useful to you is we have the blocks handbook and the block editor handbook. It might have something in there about looping if we looked a little deep, <laughs> but I'll still ask around and see what I can get to you in terms of an answer on that. And then I would love to stay connected with you all. Um, there's also this individual learner survey. If you have a couple moments, we'd love to learn more about um, and by we, I mean the training team who helps put on these interactive learning sessions, online workshops for this community. Um, we just would like to know, like, how do you like to learn? What type of content would you like to learn? How can we better this experience for you all? So yeah, if you're just starting with WordPress, for example, um, just sharing about, you know, what topics you're interested in, how you prefer to learn um, and what you need to know to get started will be really helpful. And then if you'd like to stay in touch, um, here's a couple links. This, if I believe everyone has signed up on Meetup, so I'll be sending a email later once I get the video, just so that you can rewatch this video. And I'll also include the slides so you can look through the deck that I've shared today. I think I can actually share that already, so. Happy to pop that in right now. Copy the link. If anyone wants the slides right now, there, there you are. Okay, well, I'm gonna stop my share. A visual. So Stefan says, I would like a general visual overview of who the machine of WordPress is working. Oh, like, like a code overview. Oh, I have, you know, it's late for me. I could have read it. I understood what you meant, <laughs> how the machine is working. Yes. I think there are probably other WordPress and let me share this link with you. WordPress.tv videos on the inner workings of WordPress that you might find interesting. So I'm going to leave this link with you here. I'll, I can try to find a more specific video, um, but this is also a really great resource. We have videos in multiple languages as well. I'm sure you'll find some, some German content in there. Um, there's a lot of non-English content in there for folks. So have a look in there too, and I'll see if there's one that's like dissecting WordPress <laughs> for you to, to look at. I'm going to stop the recording as well.